Did you know there's space debris, millions of pieces of junk orbiting Earth right now? It's not just a science fiction problem. The debris could threaten satellites, space stations, and the commercial tech that we rely on every day. GPS, internet, communications. So who's out there cleaning it up? I know a guy. Meet the Space Cowboy, a West Point grad who helped build the US Space Command and Space Force, and now he's on a mission to clear Earth's orbit. And what he's building might just impact the future of space. We think a lot about the pollution. We think about the litter here on Earth, which is very important. But did you ever think about all the sky pollution in space? If not, the Space Cowboy is going to tell you all about that. This is my new friend, Joe. And tell us everything about what people don't know and also about the space economy. Sure. We've been throwing away space debris, space trash, ever since the 1950s when we started launching satellites. And the population of space debris has reached a level where it's really unsustainable. So there are over 1 million pieces of small space debris between the size of one and 10 centimeters in low Earth orbit, which is the orbits between four and 1200 kilometers above the Earth. And that's the area where we're seeing a lot of explosion and commercial activity. So we've got a collision course going on between a growth and proliferation of space debris and a growth and proliferation of satellites in low Earth orbit. And so I've created Space Cowboy to go and secure and actually clean up some of that space debris and give us more information about the space debris so that we can help uh, commercial companies and government uh, operations uh, operate operate more safely in low Earth orbit. That's my next question is like, why do we need to, space is just in only, why if somebody's watching this, like, do we need to get rid of that debris? Well, I mean, number one, space is offering us a lot of really, really uh, new and great technologies that we need. There's uh, the zero or the uh, microgravity environment enables the manufacture of materials that we cannot manufacture here on Earth. And some of those even include like human organoids so that they can grow human tissues in space and they use them to, to make uh, better uh, replacement livers and such uh, for people that need that on Earth. That also applies to, you know, microchip manufacturer. You can manufacture a more perfect microchip in the microgravity gravity environment. And so there's going to be more and more products and services that are offered in space. And a lot of that activity is going to occur in low Earth orbit. So all this debris flying around is not, it's not good if you're That's trying right. to do business. That's right. And so a ways back, probably, you know, I'm guessing about 30 years ago, uh, there was a, there was a gentleman at NASA named Don Kessler. He's still around, but Don Kessler theorized that there would be a time, a tipping point where there would be so much debris that would be an uncontrollable growth and it would hamper our ability to actually even get to space. And that's called the Kessler syndrome in the, in the business, so to speak. But, uh, How are you interested in this? Well, I grew up in Houston, Texas, which is kind of like the original space city. Houston, we have a problem, right? And um, uh, in, the, in the shadows of Johnson Space Center, my mom took me to see the space shuttle when I was a kid. You're a military guy. And I'm, I'm also a military guy. I graduated from high school in Houston and went off to the military academy. So I was a West Point graduate. My sister was a West Point grad. Fantastic. Where were you? 94. Class of 94. Oh. Yeah. So uh, um, spent 26, the next 26 years actually serving in the in the army. And Thank the, you for your service. Actually, I'm I'm uh, I'm proud to have done that, and uh, and I'm I'm grateful for the for the service, and I'm grateful to have been uh, you know a part of building Space Command and also Space Force. So when I retired in 2020. Both of those organizations had been officially stood up, and I had I had an opportunity to contribute to those things. But back in my early uh, my early years as a space operations officer in the early 2000s, I actually helped uh, what was then the Space Force with Air Force through all the satellites back then. Helped the Air Force, helped the Intel community, and helped NASA. Uh, secure their high value platforms in space is one of my duties. And so we actually use ground-based sensors to find space debris and help those assets steer around them. They're, they call that a collision avoidance maneuver. So we provided collision avoidance maneuver support from, from where I worked uh, back then, Cheyenne Mountain Air Force Station, Colorado. So this was embedded in me early in my space operations career. And it just so happens that when I retired in 2020, this opportunity came from the Space Force uh, through their innovation arm called SpaceWorks, uh, where they were looking for small businesses like mine to develop ideas on how to deal with the space debris problem. And so we put together a proposal and uh, we actually won uh, a grant to, to get us off the ground. And we used that grant to partner uh, with a uh, nonprofit in Texas called the Southwest Research Institute in San Antonio. And a uh, partnership was born, Space Cowboy came into the picture and we, uh, and we de developed our first uh, concept satellite on you know how to do this, and uh, that was a couple of years ago. So I've been at this now 
for over two years, really kind of refining my pitch to get investors involved and to. Uh, As you say here, one point eight trillion dollar space economy. I mean, investors got to be chomping at the bit to get on board. Well, there's there's a lot of there is a lot of money going into the space uh, economy right now from investors, including some uh, active debris remediation. This is the the mission that we're doing, active debris remediation. Um, and, and so I'm really, really proud to be contributing to that. And I, and I think that uh, the capabilities like Space Cowboy and other ADR companies, shout out to my ADR brothers out there and sisters at uh, Clear Space, uh, at Astroscale, and KMI, and Starfish. A lot of uh, companies across the globe are, are looking at this problem and, and uh, trying to do something about it. And it's taken a long time. And I, you're, you know, there's people lining up to talk to you. I just want to ask you one last question. Like in your pitch, to potential investors, it's like where, and forgive me, ignorance, what's in it for them to get the debris out? Like how do they make money by getting the debris out? Cause you're doing the right thing. We right. gotta clean this up. Right. So I go back to my military experience with this and, uh, and really in particular missile defense, my time with missile defense. And one of the concepts we use with missile defenses, we don't have to shoot down every missile. We only have to shoot down the missiles that are gonna hit our protected asset. So number one is to identify what is your protected asset. And then number two is to focus all your resources on protecting that particular thing and nothing else. The way that I've uh, conceptualized Space Cowboys, we identify a commercial paying customer as our protected asset. And by protecting their capital asset that just happens to be in orbit, you know, we're actually they're, they're actually paying themselves to protect their own satellites. And also, do you think there's a government play here too, just in terms of the clean absolutely. up the debris? Oh, absolutely. I mean, government's created most of the debris, so a lot of the you know blame falls upon government organizations. So I think they do have a responsibility to at least contribute to the solution. And uh, and they are. A lot of governments are, are stepping up to the plate, including the U.S. government, the Japanese government, the European Space Agency, the UK Space uh, UK Space Agency. So worldwide, there's this movement to uh, sustain the space environment. And I'm just uh, happy to be along for the ride. Well, I'm really looking forward to checking back in with Space Cowboy next year and seeing how far this mission has come. There was so much excitement around it at Emerge America. It's one of my favorite tech events and an incredible showcase of what's next in space innovation and beyond. So let me know what you think about cleaning up space and how do you see companies like this shaping the future of space? Let me know in the comments. I'm Katie Linnadal, don't give up the ship.